I'm Simon Kidd from Snowbee, and today we're going to look at some simple steps on getting you started in fly fishing. I'm assuming here that you've got your fly rod, your fly reel and your fly line all matching and perfectly balanced and ready to go together, but you've now got to put it together and assemble everything to get you started. So this is how we'll start. What we're going to do first of all is load the reel. We need to put some backing on here which serves a couple of purposes. First of all it helps build out the reel to reduce the amount of turns we need to, to um, retrieve the line once we've got it on there and also to reduce the amount of coiling um, that you can get when the line's packed on too tight and too small. Um, I've chosen for this exercise we can choose between either 20 pound or 30 pound backing and for this exercise I'm going to be loading it with a trout line I'm going to put some 20 pound backing on. I'm going to use a tool here called a line winder which actually helps us to load the line onto the reel. Uh, simple device, costs less than 12 pounds and um, what I'm going to do here is just load it quickly like so Put the spring on it here, which gives us a bit of tension, and then we're ready to go. The reel I've chosen for this exercise today is a 7 8 stealth reel, and the reason is because I'm going to put a 7 weight floating line on here. In terms of the backing, this is braided um, Dacron backing, and I've chosen this 20 pounds, and of course we've got to attach it. I've also chosen 100 metres because I'm comfortable that 100 metres will fit on this reel, but we can always check that. For the sake of the knot, and to make this secure, we use what we call an arbor knot and take the reel spool off in this situation. It makes it a bit easier. Some, of the, some reels which have got a cage on here, um, you need to actually put that on uh, with the reel in place. However, on this exercise, which is an open cage, then uh, it's not so important. The knot we use is quite simple. We loop it round. Some people loop it round twice, to be sure, but you don't need to do that. I put a, a loop through here. A loose loop around the main line, put the tail end through there to make a loop like so, just tighten that down slightly and then I'm going to put a knot on the end of this one which will lock up against there like so as it draws down and just literally twist it and pull and that locks it, it's completely secure and that's not, not now going to run or anything as we tighten it up. Having secured this ball we can now put it back on the reel, tighten this down and we're ready to go. What I'm going to do here is now I'm just going to wet the bottom of this and stick it to a tabletop. Works really well and just apply a bit of attention on this one here. I don't want it too tight but just makes it nice and neat and tidy on the spool. Uh, and wind. I've got it up set up for left hand wind. As I'm loading this line onto here I'm just gently easing it backwards and forwards with my forefinger on my right hand just to make sure we've got a nice even spread, nice and level. One of the questions often asked is how much backing do you need to put on? Well, we sell this material in 100 metre spools, and 100 metre spools is, is ample really. Um, but obviously, if you get a fish that runs, you want to make sure you've got enough backing on there that's going to hold it. Um, any fish that gets beyond about 100 metres, trout backing that is, probably done well enough to get away anyway. Um, however, there is a simple way to test this. Um, I'm up there, something about 80, 90 metres now, coming close to the end. I'll just show you a little simple test of. Um, how we determine whether we put enough backing on there or not. This is the fly line. I'll run through that in a second. But um, if we take this ball, the loose ball, it's tied on here at both sides at the moment, so it's not going to be a problem. Fold it in half. We can now apply that to the spool. And if that fits in there quite comfortably within the cage, like so, then I've still got plenty of room for backing. And as you can see, there's plenty of room there. It's going to take all of this 100 metres of backing here, no problem at all. OK, so we've now successfully attached our backing to this reel, and now what we're going to do is put on the fly line, which is this one here. The fly line, all snowy fly lines come with the same um, contents in some respects. You have a fly line inside that, which is spooled, it's always spooled. Inside the spool you also have um, a dressing for the fly line, which we can come to later. And inside here you also have some instructions in terms of how to put the fly line together. And also we have two, importantly, two braided loops which also come in the pack, one for each end of the fly line, which is what we're going to now attach and then apply that to our back end. Right, the fly line is clearly labelled on one end. In this case I'm using a twin colour fly line, which is blue for the running line and white for the head. And on the back here, it says attach this end to a reel. So it's quite simple. Um, we can slide this piece off 
And what we're looking to do now is apply a braided loop to the back of this line so that we can now attach the back in to this end here. This next exercise is one of the tricky bits because I've now got to inchworm the end of this fly line up through the, the braided loop here. Basically, I've gone through the hardest bit, which is actually threading the two together. And once you've got it started, I'm pressing the, my two fingers together and then sliding the fly line up through the loop as it goes slack and just doing about a quarter of an inch at a time, maybe a tenth of an inch, something like that, until I get to the point where it stops. Basically, inside here, we've got a loop that's been doubled back on itself and tucked inside here, so it's, at some point that's going to um, be secure and provide us with a loop. There's also a sleeve on here, a plastic sleeve. This will actually help lock the sleeve onto the fly line at the point when we secure them together in this moment. So I'm going to slide this now right up to the end of that butt. Just easing back with my right hand, making the loop here, making it slightly slacker than there, so it actually pushes through. Grip the end of the fly line and then ease it back with my other hand, like that. It's easy to do once you get it started. And that's it, it's come up to the bottom of the loop there, and now we're ready to, produce, uh, to slide the sleeve down over the actual loop itself like so. I'm going to slide it down over here, right to the end of the, uh, the braided pieces here. And I'm going to trim that off and make it a little bit tidier for a moment, like so. And I'm going to put a dab of glue on here too. A bit of super glue just to um, just to secure the loop at the end, at the sleeve at the end here, when I slide it over in a moment. And I'm going to drag it down over, like so, and just stretch it. Now that's got it covered and sealed. Right, I've only applied a light amount of, of uh, super glue on there because it will stick to your fingers and that sort of thing. In fact, it loves skin. Um, but it's just enough really to secure everything. And as you can see there, that's now held well and truly firm. And the next little job is to put another dab of super glue on the back of the loop. Where it's been tucked in in the formation of the sleeve, I want to keep that loop. I'm just going to put a dab of glue on the end of here, just to keep it now from pulling out. Just like that, that's all it is. I'm just going to spread it on there a little bit. Pull that tight, and that's the loop secured. OK, now to complete this part, I'm going to put the end of the braid, which is already attached to my reel, through the loop on the end of the loop which I have here. And you can use what's called a sheet bend um, if you've got knots and that sort of thing. However, I'm going to keep it simple. and I'm just going to use a blood knot here, a tucked blood knot. I'm going to give it five, six turns, six turns, tuck it back through itself, just damp it to keep the ends together. Trim that off a little bit. Do it again. It's better. <laughs> like so, and I'm going to tuck it through there. Draw the knot down to itself, pull it tight. That's going to secure that, no problem at all. Then trim off the loose end. It's, it's not very often that you actually come to the backing, at the end of your um, fly line, reach the backing and so on. But if you do, you do want to make sure that that's a secure knot. And just to finish that off, I'm going to put a dab of super glue on the knot as well. Like so, just a tiny little bit. Like so. Okay, so I've now attached the backing to the reel. We've joined the reel, uh, the backing and the fly line together, and now we need to put the fly line onto the reel. But this is, has to be a, a, a sensible exercise. At this point, I've left the uh, two ties on here, but I'm going to release these two ties now, keeping hold of the spool all the time so it doesn't fall apart. That's one, obviously making sure I don't cut the fly line. That's two. So those both done together. And now what's important, so that we don't get any coiling and memory and twisting and that sort of thing, is that we join the two together, fly line to reel, like that, like so. You can use, for this exercise, if you've got a friend or something, you can use a pencil through the middle and get someone to hold on to it. 
or again in this exercise I'm going to use the real wind out which we were using before. Okay I'm now going to attach this to an upright flat surface on this occasion like so. It's going to hold it on there nice and secure. Slight tension on here to keep it nice and tight and I know we've got plenty of room to actually load this on and just like before I'm going to do this in almost touching turns if I can. Okay, as you can see, I'm still on the blue running line here. It's nice and tidy. And the blue running line will soon come to the head on the fly line where it starts to thicken up. Here it comes now. There's a change in the colour. Now we're starting on the back taper of the main fly line. And immediately you can see it's getting thicker. Like so. I'm still spreading it nice and evenly across the spool. I can start to feel the front taper coming down. We've got loads and loads of room left on that spool. And there's the front taper coming now. As you can see, there's no, no memory or anything left in there, which is ideal. And now what we're going to do is put a loop on there as we did before. I'm going to take the braided loop and we'll do the inch bombing technique as we've done the last time. And putting the tip of the fly line up into the back of the braid here. like so, and then just as we were doing before, get, create a bit of slack with the left hand there, pushing it, holding it, and then pinching the end of the fly line with the left hand, just easing it up through, and then easing the braid down over the top. Just moving up through now, about a tenth of an inch, quarter of an inch at a time. Up to the same point, I'm going to butt it up against the actual sleeve, which will then slide down over. There we are, that's it, fully applied, I'm ready to go. I'm going to slide the sleeve back down just as before, gently to start with, until I get near the end. I'm going to trim that loose off, like so. Put a dab of super glue. Just like that. A couple of loose strands there which I missed. Now just holding the sleeve firmly, I'm just gently easing it through my right hand with my left because I want it to actually the actual sleeve just to loop over the end of the join keep it nice and secure a little bit of extra super glue there but it's just rub it away and that's it secured okay so that's our fly line attached our back end attached and we're almost ready to go fishing the next exercise is obviously to attach our leader and put us some droppers on if we want to and put obviously our flies on the end Okay, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to attach the fluorocarbon in this case and I'm going to choose £10 to start with. I can taper that down, I can put a dropper in, I can join that into £8, £6, got any more if I wanted to. Um, the first job, however, is a simple blood knot exercise onto the braided loop which we've applied earlier. Okay, so I'm going to take, I'm leaving the fluorocarbon on the spool at this stage because we haven't decided what length the spool is going to be. I'm taking the end of it and putting it through the loop we made on the end of the braid. Putting it through there, I'm going to tie a simple blood knot in this situation. I'm going to take, give it six turns, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to tuck it back through itself, like so, and then back through again just to make a tuck in there. Wet it slightly to reduce friction as I draw the knot up, and then gently slide it down against itself and tighten it up, like so. I'm going to trim the loose end off, like that. That's good and firm. And then I'm going to decide on the length of leader that we're going to have. And a good choice for that is to um, take the length of the rod. If you're using a nine foot rod, a nine foot leader is a good place to start. Ten foot leader for a single fly, maybe longer if you can manage that. Uh, and I'm going to actually put a dropper on this as well. So I'm actually going to use a little bit more than that. I'm going to assume I'm going to fish with a ten foot rod. Uh, and I'm going to put about a fifteen foot leader on here. And at, at about eight foot down the line, I'm going to put a dropper in. And that's what I'm going to do now. Okay. So I'm going to draw off now uh, about eight, nine feet to my first fly, something like that. I'm going to trim this off. Some people go right the way through, do the 15 foot and tie the dropper in separately, but for this exercise I'm going to do it like this. And then I'm going to take on the end another six feet, give me about 15 feet on my total leader, like so. Now for this knot, I'm going to use a four turn water knot, or surgeon knot as some people call it. 
And I say 410 because some people use two, some use three, but I've actually tested this on machines and for my, for my money, the 410 water knot is actually more secure, especially on eight, 10 pound, 12 pound, that sort of thing. I'm gonna take a dropper that's about eight inches, eight to 10 inches long, maybe a foot long, like so. That's gonna be my fly end, this is gonna be my rod end. And I'm gonna make a loop on here. I'm gonna wet it, hold the two strands together. Now I'm gonna take both the ends, both the dropper end and my point fly end, through that loop four times. One, two, three, four. And again at this point, I'm gonna wet the loop as I draw it together to reduce the, the friction and that's it drawn down together. This is going to be my dropper here. That's going to be my dropper fly, sorry there. That's going to be my dropper end. I'm going to tie off this, uh, going to trim off this loose end at the back. Like so. And what you can also do, as you can see here, I don't know if you can, but I've got two lines there actually almost lined up together. We can put a half turn, half hitch in here like so, loop it round on itself. Just gently draw it together. And now my fly, my dropper, is standing out at virtually 90 degrees to the main line, the main leader. Okay, I've got my leader set up. Now I'm gonna attach the flies. I'm gonna put a dropper on and I'm gonna put a point fly on. And to do that, I'm gonna show you two knots. I'm gonna attach the first one, the dropper, with a blood knot. To attach the fly, for that I put it through the eye of the fly, like so, and I literally give it five, six turns uh, around itself, and I'm going to tuck it, I'm going to use a tuck blood knot, right. like so, put that back through itself, that's against the actual eye of the hook in the loop that's made, or the twist that I've just put in the line, then I'm going to tuck that back through the loop that's left behind. Wet it gently and pull it tight. Like so. That's my dropper tied and I'm now going to trim the loose end off. Like so. Now I'm going to tie my point fly. I'm going to use a different knot for this, which is one of my favourite knots, uh, especially for dry fly fishing, in fact, because it's really small and tidy, but extremely strong and very quick and easy to tie. I refer to it as a, a JB knot, um, but it's actually a variation on the uni knot. Right, for this one, I take the fly in my left hand, I've got the uh, tip of the leader in this hand, and I put the tip through the eye on the fly, and hold two both strands in my right hand like so, giving myself enough room to form a loop just here. I wet them to keep them held together, like so, and now I'm gonna take the loose end and tuck that through the loop I've just made three times. One, two, three. I then take the loose end that I've got left outside there and pull that nap down slightly on itself, like so, wetting it to reduce friction and now it's tightening down on the main line. Don't make it fully tight, just enough to slide it down on towards the fly, and then I can tighten it, and that'll lock it in. I trim off the loose end. This, as I say, is a really simple, quick, easy knot. Superb for dry flies, a very small knot as well, and ideally there's no pigtailing there whatsoever. And that's my point fly secured. Okay, so there you have it. We've attached our fly line. We've attached our leader, we've shown you how to attach some flies and so on as well. We've used some loops and techniques which are, are popular, common, simple techniques to use and so on. Not necessarily what everybody would use, but it's some examples of what we might use. And there's plenty of other things as well which we can show you in the future. So in the meantime, get out there, get fishing, and we wish you tight lines. Thank you.